I hope you're ready for some maestro matchup madness, as this next one should deliver with a whole lot of thrust behind it. Zoo, I'm pumped, you're pumped, we're all pumped. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I've got to now live up to the fact that I made that prediction. You did, you and, did. Uh, the thing is, okay, biggest upset would be if Garpy wins the first map. Okay. Huge upset would be if Garpy... Like, the, the biggest upset of all time would be if Garpy wins the series, in my opinion, because I, I think Venga's just at a crazy level at the moment. Um... But Awoken. Awoken's going to be a special map for us. Uh, the only really good thing, though, for Garpy is that he is going to be playing Sorlag on mm -hmm. that, and he's a master of that type of movement. So that could be a bit of a sort of swing and a miss for me. If uh, the, the the one possible thing that could go wrong for me early on in this prediction is if the Sorlag just owns it. If it just comes through and yeah. absolutely wrecks face, which... Honestly, it's one of those for me where like I'm kind of teetering on the edge because I feel like I might be a little bit influenced, obviously based off of last week's result. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's a, there's a bit of hype behind him right now. He's looking like a bit of a steam train, you know, Garpy. He's got a lot of thrust there, and and I feel like maybe he could come into this one and just do damage. Although True. his opponent is definitely on a level of uh, of kind of excellence at the moment, I'd say. Well, I, I think with Wenger because he's a newer person in the pro scene, he's looking for that upwards trajectory. Yes, uh, Garpy's been around the block a long time in Quake. Uh, for Wenger, it's really important that that tra trajectory keeps going up and up and up, especially towards the land that's going to mm -hmm. be in his home country in Italy. He wants to be getting these results, so I think Wenger's going to be very upset if he gets if he doesn't get at least a 2-1 versus Garpy. Um, but I think really his own goals are going to be, I have to get a 3-0. Yeah. And I love his music. The, the custom music that we've got for him is just hilarious. I love this so much. I do. It really is getting me pumped. Yeah, uh, shout out Marky Music. <laughs> just, uh, 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 just amazing. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's club-like, isn't it? It's, it's kind of awesome. And it's Kid Bellissimo. Uh, this guy has had so many highlight reels. I, I, I want to say that his rockets, in my opinion, are the best in the world. But his lightning gun and his rail really do start to rival like the other big aimers in the scene. It's... It's very scary what he can do. Which is crazy when you think about it as well, because obviously being at quite a young age, it's the fact that there's so much more room to develop that skill set and mm -hmm. hit even more of a, a bigger skill ceiling, which mm -hmm. is, it's quite worrying when you think about it, because at some point, you know, you're, you're going to plateau in, inside of Quake. Once you've really mastered everything there is to master, it's only refining those skills. Where he's at a position now where he really is working on developing himself more and more and finding mm -hmm. what is his current set play style. So it's, it's really going to be interesting as well. Obviously being online, maybe there's a little bit less pressure on him, it's one of those where he can kind of be in his yeah. element. You know, he's at home, he's got his socks on with his Jimmy Jams. He's living his <laughs> movie, right? Oh, no, absolutely. The, the one thing for him, though, he needs to watch out. Big mistakes that he's made in the past is leaving himself exposed to rail angles mm -hmm. against other pros, basically. Okay. He used to make big mistakes where he would just give up free damage for no reason at all. He'd do all of the things right around the map, but he would just not even look at his opponent while doing it and just walk around and say, oh, I'm not going to get hit, and boom, he just gets hit by rail. And he does that. If he does that too much and Garpy can punish on it, that's something that he can do because while I'm looking at him, Garpy, solid wall is aim. Here's our boy. Uh, it's with the rockets that I'll definitely be watching out for him. If we could get like a rocket vest between the two players and see who's mastering that weapon more, I'm going to be incredibly excited. I think we very well might. <sighs> Going into this one, it's it's really just going to come down to, as you said, obviously, if the free real estate is given to Garpy to just do some glorious level gameplay and run away with things. But I think for me, this one is actually going to be more of a marathon rather than an early game yeah. sprint. I, I reckon this will actually go the you know the whole hog in terms of being a very close affair and really go down to the wire. I, I don't think it's going to be too much of an early game lead for either side, honestly. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm talking about confidence probably too much. I think it matters a bit more for the, for Wenger to, mm -hmm. so that he can build up so much momentum if he can if he gets in his own head he tends to sink into this kind of passive defensive gameplay yeah. which doesn't suit his character at all he needs to be the one making the flashy moves i'd actually um compare his style not too dissimilarly from t to nosfer okay i think that he has a very explosive style if he doesn't bring that early in the game, then the series could go sort of dead water for him. Yeah, we, we have to hope he isn't going to put himself into a box. But let's pull out the picks and bands from our magical box and look at what we are going to be seeing here so, getting into this series. 
Uh, well, we've got uh, early on there, we can see the Solag and the Galena. Uh, we've also got uh, Clutch afterwards going versus the Eisen. Now, Wenger, I'd say, is the second best Clutch player in the world after um, uh, Razi. Oh, here we go. We have it all in our full screen. Second best Clutch player in the world after Razi. Uh, at the end, we're actually going to get Keel versus Nyx. That's an interesting heavy versus light. We haven't seen a lot of Keel. Um, map 3 is going to be fascinating, but I think map 1 is... Garpy can win that with Sorlag. That's, the, I think, the main map that he's got the biggest chance on, in my opinion. I'm curious to see as well, again, uh, how well the actual totem placements are going to be, because that was such a, a sort of a difference maker that we saw initially, where mm. if it's calculated, if it's smart, it, it gives you more of an edge, right? And Wenger, he does seem like one of those players, as you said, when he is sort of feeling himself and he's on a bit of a roll, he isn't making too many rash decisions. He is able to keep himself quite composed. Although, if there is an early game lead for Garpy, you know, if we see the uh, the British bruiser coming through a really swinging fist and just windmilling, yeah. then I'm worried. <laughs> and uh, Wenger's the type of person who will far more leave his toe for combat than he would for triple stacking. Okay. So, right. I mean, that's not to say he won't do that, but I expect Wenger to kind of keep one on the sideline because at the moment the totem's still quite powerful in combat yeah, yeah. and uh, you can block that down. So, uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll be wrong and he'll show us a very disciplined uh, game, which I don't think is a bad... Even though he can be very explosive, Galena sets up, you know, reinforcements around the map yeah. and can create... Ins insane fortifications and then give her the tools needed to be aggressive. Yeah, uh, That's where I feel like that Italian intellect that he has is going to come into effect as well. Big brain, big gameplay. Uh, that's sort of what I expect from Wenger getting into this. That's why I think it's it actually does pose for quite an interesting matchup because obviously the two Maestro yeah. players are quite different in, in their overall sort of aspects mm. of the way they approach Quake, which has been the storyline of the day, really. It's It's been a complete contrast from one side to the other. Yeah, I like that. It, it's been a good trend to witness. No, absolutely. And uh, I think in the Maestro camp, it's going to be it's gonna be an interesting one for them to get the popcorn out. <laughs> there's no there's no bad blood between no. the players at all. When they're in the heat of this competition, obviously they want to win, and but that, that anger and that emotion stays within the arena itself. It doesn't really leave it. These guys are so close-knit together. They are like a family. Um, Garpy's been with Maestro since the absolute beginning. Uh, Wenger, I think, got signed at the back end of last year or the start of this year. And uh, I know that he's been enjoying his experiences so much with them. Um, so uh, as long as he's nice to Garpy afterwards, if he beats him, or even if he loses versus him, yeah, you know. We'll stay around a bit longer. Yeah. But if, <laughs> if we see the hugs all around, yeah. know, all still mates, all still mates. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and Garp's very like a mate person. You know, yeah. It's GG mate. You know you have the GG, that's like the FPS, yeah, yeah. GG mate. GG mate or GG M8? Oh, it's M8. M8. Yeah, M8, oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. And it's always really awkward when you accidentally do M9, and it's just like, oh, no. <laughs> well, this has gone wrong. There was a there was a Russian team called M9, wasn't there? And you, I don't know if that's definitely not what they took it from. I might be wrong on that. I think I've just been making things up. Apparently that is correct. That is Reese has confirmed. Oh, so there amazing. You go. I just, that's, that, that's I all, literally knowledge. all the uh, trivia that you're getting from me today. That's all right. That's, that's well, what I, I wanted. I talk about Monopoly maybe, that's about it. That, to be fair, that was good. I did enjoy that. <laughs> but something I enjoy much more, of course, is the action that we're going to be serving up. Let's kick it off as we're going to jump straight into right. game. It's the Maestro Madness matchup Bonanza. Right, let's do it. We are with Wenger off the start of this. He's going to get heavy early on. Has rail equipped too. It's going to look to punish on the lightning gun, which still needs to be used. Garpy, being cautious, knows it knows precisely that he's being looked over. And it's going to do a great job at not giving away any free damage. Wenger, with a slow but steady gameplay right here. He's got his ears on to try and listen out and see if he can decipher where exactly Garpy is in terms of the rotation around the map as he now starts to get a little bit faster back into it. Although that area of effect denial is going to be very nice. He does get the dot off, but luckily he'll be able to get rid of that. Yeah, Wenger's in a bit of a precarious position at the moment. He needs to get this heavy for free. He's lost a lot of health, and he only just backs up to the heavy a little Ooh. late. So Garpy gets the good start. Misses the rail off the spawn. And lightning gun through the portal, mate. I'm not just going through for the transitional experience. I'm doing the full damage. No, he really is thinking of portals. He's straight back into the action as well. Totem's going to be dropped there for Wenger. It's already 1-1 a minute in, so this has actually been a little bit more of a sprint than I thought in terms of the early game. Waiting around, though, as a stopwatch is going to come through. That's him grabbing that extra health to play with. Straight on the aggression, trying Ooh. to get the flick off. It's a nice adjustment. The rocket comes through as well, but he's not quite going to get the follow-up kill just yet. Although Garpy is low, and here comes the chaos. Love it. Straight through, rips him a new one. 
I <laughs> just realized there's more acid on the floor on the side. Got to be careful with that one. Rocket jump was perfect, though. He judged the stacks with Ooh. absolute accuracy. And he keeps landing these nice little openers. He can go one with the lightning gun now and possibly oh. win this. He finishes it off with the rail just as the mega health is spawning. Excellent work from Venga. Double rail, keeping it going as well. The chaos combo just keeping adding to there as he doesn't want to slow down. He's playing with his high octane tempo and he absolutely loves it. The lightning gun should strike his way through as it definitely will strike twice in the same place. All right, so I'm feeling better about my work predictions at the moment because he is just completely going off on Garpy. Lightning gun looks good. There's a health bubble beside him. He's got the totem up anyway in great position to set up for the next Ooh. mega. Oh, has to watch out a little for that. And gives a lot of respect to Garpy just there. He misses all the damage and then realizes, okay, Garpy's in a... is able to be highly mobile. And he knows that he loves to make those rocket jumps. Surely he doesn't get another one here. This would be absolutely insane, Zoo. Both of them so low, but somehow he's able to get himself into his oh. position using the movement as well. Straight through the portal. Again, zapping down as he'll kill Garpy. That's just crazy he hasn't been able to actually pick up that fragment. I, I just think that Garpy was so shocked that... Venga actually went through the portal because he was so low that he actually had to do a little miniature readjustment to try and get the damage and unfortunately with that rocket. The confidence is definitely shining through. You touched on that. You said the fact that Venga, he's definitely one of these players that does excel kind of when he is in his element and hmm. <laughs> I don't know what he is if he isn't in his element right now. He has to be careful, though, because he's getting played off the items. He knows that Garpy is super stacked. Gets a decent rocket, 65 damage, healthy enough. But he needs a little. He needs to hit like a rail or another rocket, at least that powerful, and then he can start thinking about uh, challenging for some items. The bounce across. We'll get a sliver of damage done as he readjusts. Gracefully moves himself up, goes for the predictive rocket as well, hoping to actually get the connection across. Dropping down the totem, it's in close range. Tries to hit him with the rockets as he's going to oh. be bouncing him around like a bouncy ball. He gets him fairly low, but he fully <laughs> commits. And that is the lightning gun, frying him down. So many things went wrong for Garpy there. He tried to rocket jump away. I don't think he had fully decided where he wanted to go with that rocket jump. Oh, oh no. he's taking more damage. He's going to be falling down into the pits. I think he rocket jumped back up as well, so he took even more damage. And now uh, Vengus is chasing him again. There's another. Eight to one. Ooh. Off the spawn is good. He reads it correctly. But he's not able to follow up too much. Not that it even matters, really. He's eight to one up at the moment. Not even halfway through the game. Oh, he's still adding to that tally as well as he looks to try and get even more. Finally starts to actually slow himself down here and doesn't overcommit into this fight. Backs off, gets himself into more of a power play position as he hammers out those rockets, looking to really run rampant into this one. The constant readjustment is good. It's a smart read. He's low on health right now as Garpy finally has an advantage to play with. But Venga's movement and the adjustment with the totems is going to quickly remedy that. Oh, oh what a rail there. I, I love what he's been doing as well um, with his rocket jumps. Oh, no. Another one through the hole in the wall being a rocket jump from Garpy. He's trying to escape onto the high ground. Has been found for a moment looking for any extra damage but it's going to be reversed onto him 9-1 now for the italian i've never seen anything like it in terms of some of these rounds he's actually hitting right now that adjustment as well that was just sheer bliss that was so elegant zoo there wasn't a quick flick it was just a really smooth adjustment the whole way round. he still wants more and more as well as he is just tearing his way through garpy garpy more like gonna right now <laughs> Yeah, this is this is hard work for him. You know, I, I was expecting Venga to be strong here, but this is really taking it to the next level for himself. Ooh. Swing and a miss. That's the most on that one. disappointing thing I've seen so far, and it was it wasn't even you know an easy one to hit. <laughs> <laughs> and that really does set the precedent of just how excellent he's been. That's he's still so getting fast. them though. That's such fast reactions. And it's just that each of these rails is just a nightmare to have to deal with. A hundred damage rocket. There's a heavy armor, but with Garpy on 60 health left, you just don't even want to go for it. I think I know exactly where he is. I think the acid spit got put down around elbow. And uh, now with these resources, I mean, you look to go 12-1, 13-1 at this stage, something like that. He's found him. 
coming in, trying to get the instant snapshot off with a row as well. Already going for the read. It might be a tight cut angle, but it'll be Pixel sniffing to try and land that one with a rocket. Although, he spots him on the cross. Scarpy trying to get into a better position, but the movement will be key here for Wenger. Speeding himself up as he looks to hit 88 miles an hour and send Garpy back to the future as he has to respawn once again. So now we've, we're enough times through the map and a high enough score uh, difference for Wenger to be very comfortable now probably trying to showboat a little bit. Mm -hmm. Especially he's, he's got the, the stacks that he needs. So I think Wenger might start looking to have some fun soon. I wouldn't be surprised if he did start to go for some really outrageous yeah, plays. Not, not that he isn't having fun right now. He's loving this. This has been very tame. All oh, the rockets from Garfi! Oh! And exchange mutual frag we've got. And we've got the items left up. And it will be Garpy who wins his way over there. Got some good weapons too. It's just the fact that there's such a ridiculous lead. The chance of anything really happening for Garpy right now would just be absolutely astronomical for him to try and get himself into mm. this one. But you never know. Let's see if the stars will align or if this is just going to be some Venga of Vengeance that starts to build up once again. Yeah, I've, I've had some pretty uh, rough moments in the past calling a game too early and you see some of the most yeah. astonishing <laughs> comebacks of all time. But uh, this certainly feels like a tough one. When you just look at the, the qualities that Venga is bringing to this game, um, yeah, I, I feel confident saying that he's he's going to be able to nurse this one home. Yeah. I mean, you never want to count your chickens before they hatch, but I feel like at this point, Venga has super chickens, and they're pretty <laughs> damn scary. So I, I, I would definitely start counting. Is that like super sheep? You know, kind of like worm style? or Kind of, yeah. I see, okay. I, I think so. It works in the same sense. They explode and do a lot of damage, just like Venga, the most explosive man we've seen today. Well, Draft is going to look to try and make this feel a bit better. He's the frag leader, I'm pretty sure, on the online section of the season. Ooh. Wouldn't mind a few more to his name. Doesn't want to let Venga catch up. But he's, he's trying to use Sorlag's advantage there in just the speed with the huge stack, but Venga is being incredibly punched. Even if he falls, Garpy's just left with so few resources. There's just not much he can do to get himself back into this right now, though. It is going to be a struggle. We're about to hit nine minutes here, really, as we're over the 8.30 mark. The rocket's coming through. It's a near miss on that one, and you give Wenger a chance, of course. He is going to grab it with both hands. The follow-up as well. The rails are just ridiculous. So looking for one on the exit. Garpy's wise to this. He's looking for the incredibly hard shots, the verticals. Can't find the rocket that he landed on tops before. Oh, that's a nice little portal play. I think Garpy knows that he's ready to meet his maker. We're about to hit it as we're going to get really close to 9.30 here at this point. 14 to 4. I don't think he can get much more of a lead than this unless something wild happens here for Venga as he has 30 seconds left to massacre against Garpy. Going in with a predictive rocket straight for the portal, so he'll get the reads. Let's actually land one of them in the end as well as he gets oh. straight back through. He's looking for a left-right good night rail to try and close this map down, but I don't know if he's going to get it just yet. Yeah, his flicks aren't working, but it also doesn't matter at all because they were working when it mattered. He can literally afford to just toy with his food right now. Yeah. Point. Maybe that's what he's been doing anyway. I don't, I don't know if that's just his style. All right, this is how I get success. Ooh. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, almost a double midair. <laughs> ah, the rail at the end. Final score is 15 to 4. Wenger looking hot on Awoken. Wow. I mean... <laughs> That was a, a raging inferno, definitely. Mm. I, you know what, by far the most uh, dominant lead we've had today, just going into it. Look at 2,500 damage advantage. Not a single rail hit for Garpy. Mm. Uh, his control was good. Like, there's nothing wrong with his control, but he just couldn't find the damage that he needed whatsoever. And also, uh, Wenger was hitting everything when he needed to. He's going versus a big target, so you would expect it. Yeah. It was good placement as well. Again, we you know from what we saw going in there, actually, overall, hmm. a different style from what we saw there with his totems. Way more aggressive, but then again, when you're that far in the lead, you can afford to be a little bit flamboyant and probably get away with it, so I'm not surprised yeah. by it. Garpy, though, he was looking good. Obviously, the Solak play, actually, in terms of the dots that he was getting off, they were very effective. Like, they were nicely built into his overall fight that he was going for. It's just, what can you really do, Zoo? You know, when someone's towering over you like that with so many frags, it's it's really just going to stomp out any confidence you've got. Isn't yeah. It? And now we're going over to 
a another small map. Uh, no rail. We we'll get to see corrupted keep. Mm. And uh, I'm pretty sure, if my memory serves me right, that we're going to see a clutch too. I mean, I'm, I'm going I'm to double check my notes. It does look like I can confirm that we have a clutch going versus Eisen. Uh, and uh, Wenger loves to he loves to play clutch on stream. He, he actually he adores the champion. But the thing is, it's very very difficult to play clutch. So there's definitely room for Garpy to punish. Well, we'll see if there is going to be much punishing coming through today. Of course, from the uh, double mid, uh, the British bulldog. Yeah, dude, it was nice. Like some of the shots he was actually hitting were just yeah. wild in terms of like how pinpoint precise they were. I don't think we've seen much like that other than other than really those today. So uh, it's it's been incredible stuff. Yeah, completely. But you know, when you've got the double mid air, just want it so bad you can taste the sweet yeah. nectar of victory in just the mid air alone. But um, you know. You have to try again next time. You will do. If he if he gets himself, he could honestly. This could happen through all of the maps uh, that we have between Garpy and Wenger. I think uh, Wenger is just a huge talent in the scene. I was disappointed. I know he was disappointed in his performance at QuakeCon, and that he feels that he can do so much more. And I think that he's trying to. His time is going to be at Luca right. this year, uh, and I think he needs to do everything he can in order to. Um, to put himself in the right mental state to really unleash. You've just got to prove that, you know, yeah. it was what it was and it was a fluke and that you can get back into it. He mm. easily can, obviously, from what we've just witnessed there. He, he's a death-defying machine and he can absolutely just run rampant into those scenarios. So I, I really wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Uh, whereas for Garpy, I, I think he, he just needs to go on the grind. Yeah. Absolutely. The, this guy's a monster when he can get up to full speed, but I just do not think we are yet there with him uh, and if he can minimize the damage as most today and get himself at least a map i think that's that's going to be something he'll be very happy with well let's find out as we're going to be getting back into the action of course map two being served up right now as things are going to be hotter than ever venga he looked absolutely outrageous on the first map and i'm ready for some more glory to be coming through from him well he's got that clutch out already dealt out the damage to the first turret his armor's looking great, has shield ready to go, and uh, Garpy with uh, some lacking mobility. Turret could serve him really well if he manages to use it at the right time, because it's deceptive how much damage it does, even through uh, the clutch shield. He's struggling to really connect fully, but this time Garpy moves in onto him, manages to force out the shield, but oh, he's on one more, one more stroke of LG, would kill him. Ooh, runs out of ammunition. He's got the machine gun, but still finds him. That is clutch. <laughs> Being actually able to find that in the end with the last few bullets just peppering into his body. But here's the instant re-aggression. Garpy wanting to try and straight bounce back from it and snap back into gameplay because he doesn't want to slow down here early on. Although Venga moving out. Didn't fancy the initial firefight. Gets himself into a better position. Height and angle. Spots out the turret as well. So he has more information now into the fight. Shield up at the perfect time. Algae's not bad at all. Oh, Ooh, see you later, duck. mate. I don't want to finish that off. You can sink into the pits. Love to see that. It's a ring out and a half, and it, it was absolutely uh, very nicely executed. Talking of execution, though, down goes Garpy, and down goes the turret as well, as both of them are being slapped about by Venga, who is looking strong right now. The rockets are coming through as well, trying to get the damage off, Ooh. although we just couldn't withstand the sheer pain that was being delivered straight into him with those 50,000 volts. I, I I think Venga messed up a lot by dropping there to the turret. He went for the rocket and was like, well, I haven't even killed the turret yet. Mega's up soon. Now Garpy's arrived and all of a sudden he's got too many targets and things to think about. Yeah. I think he knows that. Yeah. I know you're there, mate. Seriously, my turret's telling me you're there. He's been actually doing a fairly effective job in terms of the shield timing here as well going into this. Will it give him the edge he needs though? Garpy on the drop down. We've seen it not work too well for Venga. Is it going to work for Garpy? Absolutely not. Venga now with a fourth. As in terms of the battle for lightning guns, it's definitely going away of the Italian. So I like what Garpy did originally, which was to bait out the shield. But afterwards, he could have just got himself a position on heavy. Just to slow him down a little bit. The timing's possibly close enough that he could hold position there. Maybe have a light and get himself to full HP. Just bouncing over oh. here. What the hell's going on over here? What was that? He was literally on his head for the whole time there. 
That and is just crazy. Aerial the entire way. Heavy up in a second. Actually pushing onto him in midair does uh, knock him. Oh, he goes out as well, and it actually counts as the suicide on this occasion. Taste of your own medicine, Venga. Yeah, going blood for blood there on the suicide, so at least it won't be too much of a laughing stock between the boys as they're straight back into it. And it's friendly competition for the Maestro Madness. There's the rocket that we wanted to see, though, connected straight down with the aerial onslaught on towards Garpy, blowing him to bits, giving Venga another frag to play with now on a 5-1 to one lead. Bails out off the back of the rocket that he will land on Garpy on the exit. Gets him down fairly low, but didn't fancy fighting when he's this low on the stack. Yeah, I think Venga just wants to run a little bit. It's quite difficult for him to secure some control. He's got shield now, but even with the shield, it's not really enough stack. And you can see how much health and armor he lost throughout all of that. He, he's kind of back on the run, and I won't be surprised if he tries to do this for like even another minute. Unless he can get all the damage in here. Garpy's trying to get in, and he's taking shared loads of damage. Rocket after rocket, that just sells through the great Garpy, licking his wounds, manages to escape. But there's no shield up, and it means that Venga still has to be somewhat careful. Venga coming up to the five minute mark, which Ooh. is at least halfway through. He does take down the turret, but he's taking actually quite a lot wow. of damage. Although talking of damage, that's a lot of damage. Straight onto Garpy, bringing him down as he's not got much to work with. The shield goes up, impeccable timing and impeccable accuracy as he will be able to straight rip his way through him with a lightning gun, of course, and he's still looking for more. There is no downtime here as he's straight back into the action and finds himself a further frag. See you later, Garpy. And the problem for Garpy was that there was just so much rocket damage dealt by Venga when he was hiding in these clever positions to not take damage himself, or at least minimizes the opportunity for that. He goes to one HP, he somehow gets away. He doesn't miss out on the rockets, but he'll be able to collect uh, an ammo crate here. Ridiculously well done from Venga. He's going to get himself the shield, so he might drop this and try to attack. Oh, he decides to back away. Leaves it hanging, actually. He's so quick around the map with this champion. It's very graceful in the way he's actually executing his movement here. It's been paying off so majorly for him. A nice back rocket as well on the escape there to try and get himself a little bit more to play with before he fully commits to this one. Basically just resetting himself around on the path, waiting for that spawn to come up. Does take down the turret at least. And there's not too much of aggression coming through. Now though, Garpy actually does have the opportunity. He's caught him out. He knows where he is. But Venga, with that lead being so big, he just doesn't fancy the fight to. It does make it look so good in terms of not hitting those walls mm. and hallways. I think when I try to replicate what he does, it's just bang, bang, bang. Oh, not Ooh. quite the mid-air. Well, that would be something strong. He's going to have to get the hell away, though. Machine gun, that was one of the few movement errors that he's made. That could have been slightly costly. But Garpy's just struggling to keep up at the moment with the pace and trying to find the amount of time to do the maximum damage. Look at that 160 rocket damage. He took a fraction of that. And he gets away having killed a few more seconds off the clock. Still just burning down time. Basically four minutes left here for Garpy to try and get himself into the game. And if I'm honest, I don't really know when he's going to be able to. This is so reminiscent of what we saw on the initial map with just a slightly lower lead in terms of the mm. overall kill tally. But he can definitely add to that and start causing a massacre in a matter of seconds. We've seen it before. Oh, that's going to be heavy backup. Garpy is going to continue cycling. He's got to know that he's got him weak. He's just got to find a fight that he can pick where Venga can't just launch himself away. It's like you need a good rocket at the feet. You just need to bounce Venga in the air enough. And at this stage, even if he puts the shield up, he should be going down. Venga just roaming around. I really don't think we can stress it enough, actually, how flawless the movement has been from him this time around. Mm. Like, it's, it's really been beautiful to watch. It's really not as easy as it looks right now coming through, but he makes it look like child's play. Grabs himself the armor as well. He can get some extra health to play with here, so he puts himself into a nice position with a stack. He doesn't fancy the fight, but if he has to commit, he will, as he starts getting himself into a bit of a scrap. Lowers down Garpy. Garpy's going to try and get himself back up into a bit more of a power play position. Venga backing off, at least finally bumping himself into a wall, but it won't slow down his momentum. And there's just these perfect positions from Venga where even though he's moving in and into a fight, he's always got an escape route. He's never more than half a step away from being able to leave, disengage, and then uh, attack elsewhere. A little bit of fear there from the turret, but ultimately more than safe. 
And he's killing away the seconds. You know, he's he's using a kind of blood run strategy on Krupp to keep, and he's doing a really good job of it. Yeah, it's been flawlessly executed. Oh. The mid-air rocket was so close. It could have been a lovely special served up for us instead, though it's going to be the switch to the lightning gun. Both of them getting into dangerous territory here as he's rapidly spamming out those rockets, trying to really wreck his way through. Oh. Garp, he has to take on the turret, but barely survives. I, mean, I normally wouldn't fret about like a turret, 1v1 versus turret, but you're the biggest champion in the game versus it. Yeah. <laughs> Every chance that he could have gone down there. And he's still managing to hit these crazy rockets that just about force Garpy away from a fight. Like he's still hanging around. Go for LG down. He's got high ground. We'll kill that off. No issues at all. Doesn't need to go for heavy. Oh, Garpy oh. finally, <laughs> finally finds Venga when he's made a positional error. And he's back on the board. For now. Straight in as well with the shield timing. It's it's always just immaculate with how quickly he can actually get this one up and shift himself into a good position. Garpy trying to trace, trying to find anything he can do to give himself a technical edge here. But with a minute left on the clock and so many frags to find, it's going to be such a small chance of him really doing this that it's only a matter of time for Venga here. Really back again, thrusted into the combat as they chase each other down. The straight death nice. race will at least give him another kill. He's got to find him off the spawn again. There's still 20 seconds until a shield, so you just get close. You make every single risk possible. Doesn't matter if you run into rockets, you just run in no matter what. Damage is not bad, but he just ends up slipping off, and that's going to be another five seconds or so gone. Then it's like, well, there's five more seconds until Mega. Then five more seconds until I can find him, and it's just, you know, at that point, we're, we're 10 minutes and 40 into the game. It's all just slipping away from him, really, isn't it? It's it's one of those now where, again, it's been Venga basically being able to decide the affair quite early on into the matchup, actually. Uh, <laughs> it, it's been really quite dominant to watch, and I don't know. I feel like if this is something Venga can actually keep up over the course of a pro league this season, mm -hmm. that could just be such a dominant run for him. No, this is this has been perfect from Venga, and now you get to the mo moment that base was in before uh, versus Tox. You've gone 2-0. Yeah, you're looking at possibly eight points at the end of next map. Can he uh, can he keep it together? Uh, I think he's looking exceptionally good. And actually, look at the control. Interestingly enough, 15 heavies, 12 megas for Garpy. We got four and seven for Venga. He didn't really want to play the items so much. That's just how much he was. How much rocket damage he was landing from, say, yeah. a high ground, or when Garpy's trying to persist with his control. He's always having to keep control because he's always taking damage. Well, it's also the fact as well, in terms of literally basically how he was playing, like, escape play the whole time. More reminiscent of kind of what you'd expect to see from, like, a Knicks player, right? Where you're mm. basically just getting away, constantly making it such a hard margin for your opponent to catch up with you. He was doing that, but literally with hands-down flawless movement. Like, yeah. there was maybe, what, two instances we saw him make a slight mistake that yeah. shaved off a second of time? And it was, you know, negligible differences at yeah. that point. There was, there was nothing really totally wrong about it. This is possibly the worst thing that happened to him. Yeah. He gets knocked off of the map, but... You know, that's uh, Garpy's good doing, great rockets, and, uh, you know, one of, one of the uh, instances where we've got some great plays from him. I just think that, you know, I could say, if, if Garpy played better, it would have been closer. But no, like, if Garpy could have forced fights sooner, I think, is, is what I want to say, why it could have been closer. But then, in order for him to force fights sooner, he's got to take less rocket damage mm -hmm. in fighting for the item. So it's all of a sudden, you've got to do multiple different things to... Uh, to really start to equalize. Um, it's also, like the route that we saw coming through there was so sporadic and so unpredictable. Like it, it was very different every time he was basically just going for those delay tactics. So mm -hmm. it's hard to really have a pinpoint on where you expect him to be. Predicting that is going to be hard because he was so unpredictable the entire time. Like yeah. that level of play there is the extra nuance you need, right? Obviously, it kind of comes back to what we saw before with that slight sort of gap you could do. Obviously, with Nix being able to make that jump across. Sure, that's a play that you know we saw in that Tox matchup that can be very effective. But if you reveal that card, it's gone. Whereas the difference there, he basically was playing so many different cards the entire time. You don't know what he has in his hand, how mm. he's going to be approaching the game, which it, it's a whole different mindset. That was some 400 IQ level movement. <laughs> so I, I was impressed. Well, we've got an interesting match or map between them now because we go over to Ruins. We've got Keel versus Nyx. Mm. Uh, that's a big clash of styles just in the champions alone and the way that you need to play them both um, so I, I'm very interested to see how Venga is going to be able to build the advantages you need to be the one doing a lot of damage not necessarily out of control because you're s slightly out of control by default off the spawns of your inferior stack 
Um, he just needs to find out how am I going to do the damage and not be up close where Kiel really excels. Well, let's find out what level of damage is going to be done and just how outrageous this oh, is going to be. Has he DC'd? I, I think he may have, so I think we might get that restarted. Cubs are, yes, I got the map! Come on, yeah. boys! There's one for Garzi. Let's do this! <laughs> Two points in the bag. Yeah, it looks like he has crashed, so obviously he's going to be resetting that one and diving him back in. Yeah, sorry, Garpy, you don't get two points yet. You, you, can, can. you can earn two points through the medium of crushing him. You know what? It would actually be, for me as well, looking at it, I kind of thought the idea of someone actually going for the whole 3 and getting those bonus points was going to be like a rare treat we'd have sprinkled in. Maybe one for EU, one for NA, sort of every week or every now and then, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact it's looking like potentially we're going to have a couple, even just on the EU show before we get over to check out the NA yeah. side of things, we could actually have quite some dominant games. Well, I, I think we're in that sort of calibration uh, period as mm. well with the points right yes, now. Yeah. So um, I I would imagine if we're going to see some 3-0s, we'll maybe see them a, a little bit more earlier on. Yeah. And as we kind of see, all right, who are the sort of top ranking players and who are kind of leaning down towards, you know, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, then we're, they're still going to end up playing the next person closest to them in points. So uh, we're, we're going to end up seeing closer and closer games as we go later on. Um, but I'm, I'm just super interested to see how all of the points are going to are going to run, how the whole leaderboard's going to look, because it could be totally different yeah. to what we had at QuakeCon, or it could actually end up averaging out the same. It's going to be interesting, especially like towards we get closer to the later end of the season, especially mm -hmm. over like the halfway point. I think that'll give us a pretty nice canvas to actually look at sort of what the scene is looking right right now, and who's being able to excel online, who's actually taken a really rough start to things. Because yeah. obviously this is now where sort of players are going to be back into full swing of actually being able to get that practice time in, wanting to really try and hammer themselves out because obviously this is now full swing of things you know what the competition is you know who's looking fired up and if you don't start doing some damage mm. you're going to fall out of those rankings far far too quickly so it looks like he has actually lost his internet connection oh that is brutal which, uh, right there it's not ideal but i assume oh, he's going to be working to fix that. i've heard that that can hinder your chances in a map normally it's, it's it has been known to happen but uh no for venga i want to just push it just so we can hopefully kind of gauge Build a fix it. for I, him. I'm listening. But um, I, I feel like Wenger is someone who could be chasing up the points. I'm expecting him to be much higher up than okay. he was at the beginning of this. Um, and I think that base could end up... Oh, we got, we got him back. He's back. We've got him back. Amazing. He's back in the We're game. so quick here. This is phenomenal. Um, I, I'm trying to think about the kind of other players I expect to go towards the top because there's a lot to play for. Oh, yeah. the, the format when we get to land is if you get top two in your region, um, you automatically go to quarterfinals. Like that's that's really really big. So the the fight to get there is going to be ferocious. Um, I I think there's a lot to climb for Wenger if he wants to make it that far. But if he can, let's say I don't, I'm not predicting this to happen, but let's say if he just gets eight points week in week out, you know you can you can really change things up there. Yeah, I'm for, for anybody. Well, anyway. especially eight points even here and there is such a ridiculous lead in terms of the overall grand scheme of things, especially with the splits we've had with most of our matchups right now, where they are ending sort of in a 2-1 split, right? Mm -hmm. If you get those bonus points, it's such a sheer difference. Even if you do that, say, three out of like 10 weeks, that's still a miraculous addition you've got yeah. that's added onto your total tally. So we'll wait and see how that one goes, but it looks like what we're going to be peeping with our eyes right now is a big, brutal affair. Of course, the bloodlust between the two maestro boys. And we are with Garp here at the moment, who is rocking Kiel. Going to find Wenger right off the start. Quick rail, he does manage to land it. So although Wenger is going to be able to likely get onto Mega Health, he's already taken a big amount of bruising. Is he still going to go in Mega Room? Ooh, that grenade. Oh, he's hit two in a row, and there's another rail. Garpy with first blood. Ooh, this time he's looking a whole lot more fired up. This is the Garpy we wanted to see. The G-Man starting to do some damage as he's getting aggressive again. The nade's going to be coming through. The lightning gun striking down as that's two strike. Three more could be coming up. No, he's overcommitted. Oh. I mean, he needs to know that the spawn's likely to happen there. It could have been a lot worse. If he had uh, like one health bubble, he probably has the resources he needs to win the fight. But the thing is that Wenger didn't even have Ghost Walk up off the respawn. He could have been farming Wenger if he played his cards right. Oh, straight up, close quarter combat. Does actually get the shot off. He's going to be chasing him there, using it as an aggressive tactic as they're both up close and personal. The lightning gun, the death from above, as he was basically tiptoeing, walking on his scalp there to find that one. 
I love the wall jumps that we were getting from Wenger, just keeping his mobility as high as possible, making it so that it's tough to tell where exactly Garpy has to land the rockets, and um, mitigated so much extra damage that could have come out from Garpy. He spots him out on the cross. Fires off the rocket. It's a trade of damage through. It's a lovely rail that actually will be able to adjust towards him, though. Waits for the nade to go off as he doesn't fancy taking any unnecessary damage from that. Starts to push down. Again, the rockets are landing. He is just spamming his way through him, though, as he Whoa. wants to burn him down. But instead, it is going to be a critically landed rail. That is just so sublime. And he keeps giving us more. It's going to be Mega up in a second. There's Garpy fighting his way over to it. He is doomed to take damage. He can't even get onto the Mega Health. It's 4-2. And this flawless accuracy is uh, oh, doing so much good for Venga. It's crazy how quickly the tables can turn between these two men. The adjustment there as well. Look how smooth he is with that. That has got to be one of the nicest lightning gun adjustments we've seen. Yeah, this is absolutely superb from uh, Venga. Garpy is walking into a bit of a death trap, though, putting up into the open, ma Ooh. open map, not necessarily having the weapons available, taking 50 damage, still some health and armor in the bank. But uh, look at what Venga has. He is fully overstacked. Arm to the teeth right now, looking like a warlord, ready to try and cause some madness as he wants to kick this one off. Straight back in with a lightning gun. Prefers to kind of continue this with a rocket, though, as he wants to blast his way straight through to another frag. He will pick it up as Garpy goes down, and that's now 6-2 to two on the total tally. He's running out of LG. He's been having to use so much of it, he wants to top up a little bit later on. Oh, that's like, okay, and now for my next trick, I will just use the rail instead. He really is a magician. He's landing everything that he needs to. Oh, the rocket's so good. He misses the follow-up, but now the Ghost Walk can get that LG that he's been so needing. I feel like he kind of moved away from what would have been an almost certain frag there. But he's earned himself some good uh, added control on the map. I respect it, because I feel like based off the timing he had there, he's basically got himself into way more of a, a huge lead now. He's happily Oops. just going to take that straight to the lips and carry on as he looks to try and dethrone Garpy once more. A slight tag coming through with a rocket nearly with a follow-up row. He's got 70 HP as he backs off and has to try and restock himself here. Yeah, the first grenade didn't matter. The second one, I was like, oh, this could be troublesome. And now he's forced to use a defensive ghost walk. He's going to get heavy, though. Garpy seems to be totally off the map with that item. He absolutely could have challenged on that. And I think for Garpy, he kind of needs to take those risks sooner rather than later because four minutes turns into eight minutes so quickly going versus a Nyx who has a lead to uh, to hold on to. Oh, the walk back into the rocket. It looked like he was going to be sidestepping straight into his own demise, but luckily he survives. Let's see if he can try and keep himself going into this one, though. Four minutes 30 on the clock now. Seven to two being the split in the kills. Nix backing off as Wenger looks to try and carry on this absolutely beautiful run in today's matchup. Barely missing with a rail. Readjust to restock on the weaponry. He is going to get the shot through as well. Grabs the extra armor, and that's another kill as Garpy goes down again. A brutal. And Venga was like, if it goes wrong, I've got the uh, Ghost Walk appearing in three tenths of a second, two tenths of a second, and you're counting down literally because you can see the, how much in trouble he's getting. But he didn't even need it in the end. Venga's just hitting everything that he needs to. And, you know, it's Keel. It's a, a sizable target. Movement as well. You can see he's being so aggressive here, but it's controlled aggression. He knows when to not over aggress and just play for the item control, which is a smart move to make straight up in with the LG, though, to burn his way through. Much like a rundown fairground, Garpy just doesn't have a lot to go on right now as he's going to try and back off, but this should be another time he is smitten down to the underworld. Yeah, glorious stuff. Very straight up. Garpy's got nowhere to go along that little hallway. And Venga can reap all the benefits. He's been low on ammunition, so he's going to have to be slightly careful for a moment. That's the LG. It's going to mean that Garpy gets himself probably the largest portion of control that he's had the entire game. As we've got no armor. It's basically starting stack for Venga. A good rail. Oh. There's a Ghost Walk available. Venga's just going to try and keep his health above 90. That's his entire goal at the moment. 
I like the fact he actually didn't feel the need to go in for the commitment there as well. He was really low, but he's holding on to the Ghost Wolf to at least give himself some more to play with later on. The Rocket coming through just in case, as he does hear the footsteps being stalked here by Garpy. But look at this in the meantime. The absolute build-up that Garpy's found. He is feeding himself. Yeah, there's so much room to work with. Oh, I feel Vang is fortunate not to get hit by that. He's got the Ghost Walk available. If he takes, I think, an ounce of damage, he probably uses the Ghost Walk. Surely, right? I don't think he wants to be gambling and being like one point of health on it. He wants to have probably at least oh, collect 100 collective health and armor before he uses the Ghost Walk. But he's just being silent. This is what happened in the, in the last map. He had a good lead. He loses control. He then just wants to make sure he's not feeding up those frags when yeah. he has lost control. So he's just being very tame and disciplined. Which is a really smart move to make. Let's see when he actually is going to decide to pop it though to get away as soon as he gets down to basically 80 there. And total oh. overall stack. The rockets are still coming through, but he will go down. And Garpy is now starting to do some damage. Although, again, it's at such a critical time, Zoo. Seven minutes on the clock, and he's only got three kills to work with. If you're going to get into this, you have to become an absolute fragaholic. Absolutely. He needs to find him. Uh, Venga has had used the ghost before dying. The reason he died actually he made a small movement mistake. He was trying to wall jump off that pillar, off that column that uh, Garpy just passed, uh, but he ended up just running straight into it. Even if he made the jump, I'm not sure if he gets away unless he can get around one of the connected corners. Oh, the timing with our power of X-ray. We can see really how close it is. He just needs to check. He needs to commit somehow. He's going to commit on the right side. You just need to go for it, Garpy. Stop going for the control. Like, control is good, but you need to force out the Ghost Orc because you're not getting a kill until you've at least done that. And I think Vengo will certainly use the Ghost Orc before going down rather than just save it for a later life. The rockets are crisp and critical at least, but the Ghost Walk is definitely going to aid him to try and deceive and get away from his enemy here. The shot's coming down at least with a death from above to lower him so much. So Garpy now pushed back and paranoid at this point as he'll be quaking in his boots. Venga uses the element that he has to play with here to just stock up once again, get himself into a good position overall as he's really starting to build up a healthy HP to play with. Garpy's got to commit to this fight. I just don't see him having a choice. He needs to go for LG and then hope he can string together a clutch rail. Ooh. There's one. He needs more than that. Venga misses an important shot. He's got a chance to close this one out, but Venga's just been able to move past and Garpy's timing to go for the angles does not work out for him. Ooh. And if it wasn't over... Oh, he actually gets the kill? Unbelievable. Venga has still got the Ghost Walk up. So the thing is, it's, it can't really be the start of a comeback unless he just he got a kill like a minute ago, Ghost Walk down, and then he can really uh, try and parade. He would really have to completely just constantly throw himself at him over and over <laughs> again. And Garpy's so low as well. He literally has 5 HP. Luckily, he gets himself into a position to try and suck up some more health to play with. It's a couple of misses coming through, though. He's not landing the nades. He's not landing the rockets. And he's being pressured, trapped in a close angle. Close quarters combat about to kick off. Whose lightning gun is going to be stronger as sparks are flying? And Garpy has been fried. Just for Garpy, it's just like, this map is so small. Can I just get some extra space around here? Just got this really, really hot... It's the place that you go to when you really want some resources, but you also know that you're under pressure. And if that opponent finds you, you just like, oh, it's only... It's somehow managed to get worse. I'll leave you in a really uh, awkward predicament, much like he's in now. Fought the 10. Venga looking to try and finish it off with an 11th kill, and that'll be it. The final blow as he walks away. And I think it's fair to say, shit dominance from Venga. He looks incredible today. He has come in. He has absolutely pulled out all the stops. He did exactly what he needed to do. Uh, you can see here, in terms of control, fairly balanced, but you've got an increased stack on the heavy champion of Kiel. If you if you balance the champion stacks out, it probably the damage would be fairly even, if anything, but um, just everything is so perfectly done for Venga. Yeah, it was very nicely executed. Again, movement seemed like it was just, you know, second nature to him in terms of it just being so graceful. The shots were beautiful. The prediction was nice. The thing that I think has set him apart for me today, though, is just understanding exactly when to use his abilities mm -hmm. throughout the entire day. It hasn't mattered what champion he's on, right? We've seen really kind of perfect placement if it came down to the totems, if yeah. it's come down to his ghost walk. It, it's always been when it's in a do or die scenario. Yeah, Venga's been 
flawless of that. His aim has certainly helped as well. And at least for Garpy, he managed to get himself a nice little clip at the beginning. Yeah. The opening the opening frags were pretty nice for him, but unfortunately, it didn't get much better. Fingers made him look quite mediocre. Garpy is absolutely anything but that. I just think that uh, Venga's very comfortable with the matchup, knows Garpy very well, and on to add to that, he's someone who's just going up higher and higher in skill as the week's days go on. Which is perfect, really. That's kind of what you want to see, right? That level of ascension from Wenger over the course of this season. Because if this is the Pro League season now, where he, he really comes into it, comes into his own, and essentially breaks off any form of, mm. as you said, really starting to regress if things don't go his way. If he can learn that to just not be phased and play like this the whole time, especially on LAN, if he potentially was able to really rack up a whole lot of points, yeah. I would be scared to go up against him. Because that is a cage match versus a wild animal. Completely. Completely. So uh, that makes uh, base and and Wenger, the eight-point winners today. Yeah. It's going to shake up the standings. We'll take a look at them later on, though, so don't worry about that. Coming up next, though, we've got Kilsen and Cooler. That's going to be something. And we've got the maps that they're going to be playing already as well. We've not seen a Blood Covenant yet, I believe. We haven't seen Blood Run either. We haven't seen Blood-based maps or Veil, vale, I'm mm. pretty sure, um, somehow. Um, but... Uh, I mean, put your predictions in chat, guys. I know who I'm going to go with, but I'll uh, I'll save that for later. I think this one is, is really going to be one of our two slobber knockers of the day. Yes. We've already been served way more explosive games than I was expecting, so that has been amazing. But this and the Rafa Rampage that's going to be coming up later, I, I think, hands down, this is going to be where the meat and potatoes are. So you guys definitely want to stick around for that. We'll be back in for some complete madness here. If you enjoy Quake action, this is where it is at. We'll see you off the break.